We're going to start the topic of pattern sequences and series by taking a look at some arithmetic sequences. An arithmetic or linear sequence, as you might have learned the name in grade 11, is a pattern with a constant difference between consecutive terms. Okay, so let's just unpack these words a little bit. The word consecutive means one after each other. So a linear or arithmetic sequence is a pattern where the difference between terms that come one after each other is the same. So we can write this mathematically by saying that term 2, T2, minus term 1, in other words, we're finding the difference between the first and second terms, is the same, is equal to the difference between the second and third terms. And we could carry this on, it would be the same as the difference between the fourth and third terms, and so on and so forth. In general, we can write this difference as being the term that we're looking at minus the term that comes before it. So Tn represents any term of the sequence, and Tn minus 1 represents the term that comes before Tn. Okay, so that is the definition of an arithmetic sequence and a little formula that we can use to find the constant difference. Okay, let's take a look at an arithmetic sequence that's given here. 5, 8, 11, and 14. Now, we know that a sequence is arithmetic when I find the difference between the terms to be the same. So if I take term 2 and minus term 1, 8 subtract 5 is 3. If I take term 3 and subtract term 2, 11 subtract 8 is 3. And if I take term 4 and subtract term 3, 14 subtract 11 is also 3. So I can see that this pattern has a constant difference between consecutive terms of 3. Now, in general, we refer to the first term of the sequence with the variable a. So we can refer to the 5 or term 1 of the sequence as a. Now, if we think about generalizing, we now want to come up with a general formula for an arithmetic sequence. To get from the first term A to the second term, we add a difference. So in this case, the difference is 3, but in general, to get from term 1 to term 2, we add D to A. Then to get to term 3, if we go back and we say, right, from term 1, we started by adding A. By the time we get to term 3, We've added 3 to get from 5 to 8, and then we've added another 3 to get from 8 to 11. So we've added twice the value of D. To get from term 3 to term 4, if we're starting to look back retrospectively to term 1, we start off with A, and by the time we get to term 4, we've added 3 times the difference. So if we just take a look at the sequence in general that is being created here, A plus D, A plus 2D, and a plus 3d. We can see that the coefficient of d, if you like, in this instance we've added zero differences, the coefficient of the d is one less than the term that we're on. So for term 1, the coefficient of d was 0. For term 2, the coefficient of d was 1. For term 3, the coefficient of d was 2, etc., etc. So in general, if I want to find the nth term of an arithmetic sequence, I need to start with the first term, and then I need to add to that one less than the term number I'm on differences as the coefficient. And this formula is a very, very useful way of finding the general term of an arithmetic sequence because if I know the first term and I know the constant difference, I will then be able to find the general term of the pattern quite easily. And then the pattern you might remember, the general term from grade 11, is the AN plus B pattern. You're welcome to use that as well. It is actually just the simplified version of the A plus N minus 1D. Okay. Let's have a look now at something known as the arithmetic mean. The arithmetic mean is the number that is exactly halfway between two numbers. And because it is exactly halfway, the two numbers with the mean form an arithmetic sequence. So any pattern of three numbers, for example, if you had the pattern 2, 4, 6, this is an arithmetic pattern, and if you think about it, 4 is exactly halfway between 2 and 6. Okay, so, in other words, 4 is the arithmetic mean, and together 
those three terms make up an arithmetic sequence. Okay, very quickly, we're just going to take a look and revise quadratic sequences. Please go back to the grade 11 video on quadratic sequences if you require more information. Okay, so a quadratic pattern is one that has a constant second difference. All right, so if we find the first differences between the consecutive terms in the pattern, they will not be constant. But if we then find the difference between the differences, then we should find it will be constant if that sequence is a quadratic sequence. The general term of a quadratic sequence is given by Tn is equal to An squared plus Bn plus C. And you will remember from grade 11 that we can use these little formulae to help us to find the values of A, B, and C in the pattern. So twice A will be equal to the constant second difference. So you set up an equation with your constant second difference in twice A. 3A plus B will be equal to the difference between term 2 and term 1. And A plus B plus C will be equal to the value of term 1. So you find A first, substitute it into the second equation to find B, and then substitute both A and B into the third equation to find C. Okay, here are some examples for you to try. They are in the, in the activity book, so please pause the video and try these questions and then use the video to mark your answers. Okay. Number one, find the common difference in the sequence below and then write down the next three terms. So to get from one to negative four, if we wanted to find the difference, we would say negative four subtract negative one, term two minus term one. That will give us negative four add one, which is negative three. Let's just double check that negative three gets us from negative four to negative seven. Yes, it does. So therefore, this is an arithmetic sequence. And the next Three terms will be negative 19, negative 22, and negative 25. Question 2. Given the sequence negative 15, negative 11, negative 7, all the way to 173, find the nth term. In other words, they want you to find the formula for Tn here. We know that in the arithmetic sequence, let's just double check that this is in fact an arithmetic sequence. To go from negative 15 to negative 11, we add 4. To go from negative 11 to negative 7, we add 4. So it is arithmetic. It has a constant first difference. So we can use the general form of an arithmetic sequence formula. And we can substitute in A is the value of the first term. And D is the common difference between the terms. 4 times n is 4n, 4 times negative 4, 4 times negative 1, I beg your pardon, is negative 4. So we will have 4n, negative 15 subtract 4 is minus 19. Number b, hence determine the number of terms in the sequence. Now, we were given that the last term of this sequence is 173. So if I can find out what the term value is, the n value is for 173, that will tell me which term of the sequence it is. So I know that the formula for all the terms in my pattern is given by 4n minus 19. If we equate that to 173, we will be able to solve for the n value that gave us the 173 as the value. So we add 19 to both sides. 173 plus 19 is 192. And divide both sides by 4 gives you n to be 48. So therefore, there are 48 terms in this particular sequence. Question 3. Insert an arithmetic mean between 7 and 17. So if we want to insert an arithmetic mean, we know that we are looking for the value that is exactly halfway between. So all we need to do is find the average between the two values. So if we add 17 and 7 and divide it by 2, 17 plus 7 is 24. 24 divided by 2 is 12. So in other words, the value of A in this case, the arithmetic mean, will be 12. Okay, so let's just double check. If the sequence is 7, 12, 17, we can see that we add 5 to get from 7 to 12, and we then add 5 again to get from 12 to 17. Question 4. In an arithmetic sequence, 
term 6 is equal to negative 8 and term 20 is equal to negative 36. Determine Tn. We were told that the sequence is arithmetic, so we know that the general term of the pattern will be given by a plus n minus 1d. We are further given the value of two terms in the pattern, and therefore we can make that substitution into two different equations so that we'll be able to solve for a and for d. So if we first start with term 6, the value of term 6 is negative 8. We don't know what a is, but we do know that the n at that term is 6, and we don't know what d is. That simplifies to a plus 5d. On this side, if we substitute in term 20's value, term 20 is negative 36. We don't know a, but we do know that the n value at that um, point in the sequence is 20. So that gives you negative 36 is equal to a plus 19d. We now need to um, do a simultaneous equation in order to solve for a and d. And the easiest way to actually solve this, because a has the same coefficient in both equations, is just to take equation 2 and to subtract equation 1. So if we take negative 36 and we subtract 8, so that will be the two left-hand sides, negative 36 subtract 8, and on the right-hand sides it will be a plus 19d subtract a plus 5d. I beg your pardon, it will be negative 36 subtract negative 8 because we are subtracting the two left-hand sides of the equation. Negative 36 subtract negative 8 is the same as negative 36 add 8, which is negative 28. A minus A is 0, and 19D subtract 5D is 14D. Divide both sides by 14, and you get your D value to be negative 2. We can now substitute that back into either equation to solve for A, and you will get your A value to be positive 2. Okay, so we were asked to find Tn. That means Tn will be 2 plus N minus 1 times negative 2. And if we simplify that, we'll have negative 2N plus 2 plus 2 is plus 4. So your final formula is Tn is equal to negative 2N plus 4.